Last two consecutive Wednesdays ago, we have studied the life of two servants of God, having been experienced the grace of God in different dimensions of life. To really comprehend the grace bestows upon them by God, let us learn and study what's grace all about. But before we go on, we first go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Ama naming Diyos na banal, Panginoon, sa gabi ito kami po ay lubos na nagpupuri, nagpapasalamat sa kadakilaan mo sa aming pong mga buhay. Salamat sa pagkakataon na maaari po namin muling matunghayan ang iyong mga salita. Salamat po sa bawat isa na nanonood at uh, makikinig po ng iyong mga salita sa gabing ito. Amin pong dalangin ang iyong Santo Espiritu ng malayang kumilis po sa amin at pangusap at dalangin po namin pagkatapos po ng amin pong pag-aaral ay kayo nga pong magtagumpay po sa amin. Pinagkakatiwala po namin ang kabuan po ng amin pong pag-aaral sa pangalan ng amin Panginoong Yesus. Amen. Amen. What is grace all about? What is grace? Grace is an essential part of God's character. Grace is closely related to God's benevolence, love, and mercy. Grace is unmerited favor. It is God's favor towards the unworthy or God's benevolence on the undeserving. In His grace, God is willing to give us and bless us abundantly in spite of the fact that we don't deserve to be treated so well or dealt with so generously. But grace is not merely unremitted favor God's favor toward the unworthy or God's benevolence on the undeserving, grace in full meaning is the merciful kindness of God exerting His holy influence upon souls, turns them to Christ, keeps, strengthens, increases them in Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles them to exercise of the Christian virtues. To fully understand grace, we need to consider who we are without Christ our past condition and who we become with Christ our present condition let's see our past condition we were born in sin in Psalms chapter 51 verse 5 behold I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me and when we were guilty of breaking God's holy laws Romans chapter 3 verse 9 and 20 what then are we better than they no in no wise we have better proof both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. In verse 20, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We were enemies of God, Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. In Romans chapter 8, verse 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, And ye, that you were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now we had reconciled, deserving of death. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. We were unrighteous. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Without means of justifying ourselves. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall it no wise be justified in his sight. For the law is the knowledge of sin. Spiritually, we were destitute, blind, unclean, and dead. Our souls were in peril of everlasting punishment. But then came grace. God extended His favor to us. Now here comes our present condition. Grace is what saved us. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Grace of God is what justifies us. Romans chapter 3, verse 24, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Because of His grace, we are redeemed and forgiven. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Grace gives us victory over sin. Sin of 
pride. James chapter 4 verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. God give us eternal encouragement and good hope. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. What grace all about? In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace is about the gift, the giver, and the receiver. Let's first see the gift. The gift, the precious gift, the permanent gift, and the perfect gift. The precious gift is the gift of salvation, the most precious gift ever given and received by man. The permanent gift, gift of eternal life, it will last forever. The perfect gift, unspeakable, unspeakable gift, the only begotten Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible repeatedly calls grace a gift. This is an important analogy because it teaches us some key things about grace. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. First, anyone who has ever received a gift understand that a gift is much different from a loan, which requires repayment or return by recipient. For the fact that grace is a gift means that nothing is owned in return. Second, there is no cause of person who receives the gift. A gift is free to the recipient, although it is not free to the giver who bears the expense. The gift of salvation costs us sinners nothing but the price of such an extravagant gift came at a great cost for our Lord Jesus Christ who died in our place. Third, once a gift has been given, ownership of the gift has transferred and is now ours to keep. There is a permanence in the gift that does not exist with loans or advances. When a gift changes hands, the giver permanently relinquishes all rights to renege and take back the gift in future. God's grace is ours forever. Fourth, in the giving of a gift, the giver voluntarily forfeits something he owns, willingly losing what belongs to him so that the recipient will profit from it. The giver becomes poorer so the recipient can become richer. This generation and voluntary exchange from the giver to the recipient is visible. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that you through His poverty might be rich. Finally, the Bible teaches us that grace is completely unmerited. The gift and the act of giving have nothing at all to do with our merit or innate quality. In Romans chapter 4, verse 4, now to him that worketh is the reward that reckon of grace, but of death. In Romans chapter 11, 5 to 6, Even so that at this present time, the remnant according to the election of grace. And if grace that is no more works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But it is of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise work is no more work. But in fact, the Bible says quietly, clearly that we don't deserve God's salvation. In Romans chapter 5, 8 to 10 says, But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through Him. In verse 10, For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. So much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Next, the giver. God Himself, the great God, the great giver. He gives the greatest gift of all, the great salvation. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which are the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard Him? Gracious giver, gracious God, He gives gift to the unworthy and underserving. Not only gracious, but also generous giver. Generous God, He gives it all. Third and last, 
the receiver. It is unworthy and deserving. Why? Because he is he or she is unclean, useless, dead, destitute, selfish, self-righteous sinner. Though we were such, when the great, gracious, and generous God reached us by His grace, the precious, permanent, and perfect gift was given unto us, and we were what we are now. From rug to riches, from death to life, from hell to heaven, from son of the devil to son of God, from the servant of sin to servant of righteousness, from sinner to saint. As we learn the amazing and abundant grace of God offers to every one of us, read ready avail Christ everlasting life go repent and accept Christ and expect God ever ready to account you as his child evermore grace God's riches at Christ's expense that's all about grace thank you for watching thank you for listening good evening to everyone God bless you